Hey y'all, welcome back. You are cooking in the Gangsta Goodies Kitchen with your favorite cooking show host, Sheila. How y'all doing today? I hope you're doing well, just as I am. And I have a special treat for you today. If you're in Kansas City, you know that for the last couple of weeks, one of the hottest topics has been our public school system, okay? And so today's special guest is the president of the school board, y'all. So we're gonna have a conversation about all those things that are going on, and we're gonna make charcuterie today. So stay tuned for this episode, y'all. What's up, Kansas City? This is Nate Hogan, your KCPS school board president, and I'm about to get schooled by the very one and only Sheila Johnson in the Gangsta Goodies Kitchen. Looking forward to talking to y'all. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. You are in the Gangsta Goodies Kitchen, and this episode, I'm so excited about it for many reasons. First of all, I have my friend Nate. Hogan. Hogan, in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Nate and I met, uh, oh gosh, what year was that? 2007? Yep, 2007. Yes. Yeah, a long time ago. Yes. We worked together on uh, the Obama campaign, and actually it was during the primary when we first met. It was. Yes. Yeah. Man, that was fun, wasn't it? It really was. Wow. And we made a difference. We did make a difference. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. So, Nate is, can you tell everyone what you do? What I do, so professionally, I'm a senior executive in the healthcare technology industry. Okay. Um, been doing that for the last 15 years or so. Spent 12 years at Cerner and then went to a different company, uh, also in the healthcare space. Okay. And um, civically, I'm engaged. I serve on boards. Um, the biggest and most important board, in my view, is the Kansas City Public School Board. So, okay. president of the school board. I've been on three and a half years, was vice president for two years, and then elected by my peers Look in April you. of last year to board president. Wow, yeah, look at time. you. The most, I always tell people it's the most fulfilling professional thing I've ever done. Yes. Nothing comes close and I don't get paid a single penny for it. Yes, I love it. You know, and that whole, you know, idea is that we are supposed to give back, mm -hmm. you know, um, and giving back in ways, you know, that matter to our kids and to our community. That's huge. Yeah, to, what is it, uh, the verse? I'm kind of a heathen Christian, so uh, to whom much is <laughs> given, too. much is required. <laughs> yes. Right? It's like live those principles out in your life, and if everybody did that, man, what what a different place this world would be, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to talk more about that because it's a hot topic. There's a lot of changes going on, going on. Uh, but we're going to make a charcuterie. Okay. Okay? And so charcuterie, just the pure meaning of it, just means cured meats. Oh, there was a time in our history where, before refrigeration, mm -hmm. you know, they just killed the meat and hung it to cure it, okay. you know? And so, over time, you know, we've added all kinds of things to it, mm -hmm. you know, but you, the primary focus on the charcuterie board is going to be the cured meat and the cheese, Got okay? Everything it. else is left up to your imagination. Okay. Whatever your taste buds like, that's what we're going to do. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the cheese. Okay. Okay. And so this is a Havarti. It's a deal Havarti, y'all. And so I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to give you half of it. Okay. Okay. And I should just just start eating on the right so, now, right? No. So actually what we're going to do. <laughs> No, that's not how this works? We're, no, we're going to cut this in blocks. Okay. Okay, because we're going to cut these cheeses like three different ways, so you kind of have an idea, you know, how to make your board look pretty. So imagine if all of them were cut the same, mm, it'd be kind of boring, right? Right. Uh, not aesthetically pleasing. So we want it to be aesthetically pleasing too. Right. So, you know, we're just going to cut it in little chunks. There you go. I like how you're watching me to make sure I do this. Yeah. Right. I appreciate it. Yes, there we go. And then you're going to cut those oh. in half. Yeah, because okay. you're going to make little blocks. What do you think the odds are that I'll cut myself during this process? Uh, no, don't cut yourself. Okay. Don't cut yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Got it. Okay. So then you choose on your board where you want that cheese to go, okay? And so they'll kind of stick together. You can kind of just loosen them up. 
And so I'm just gonna stick mine in this little corner right here. Yeah. See, but you're you already know, ahead of me, huh? Well, well, you know I do this all the time, so. <laughs> Yours is nice and neat, but that's okay. Th yes, that's, that's okay. That's okay. Your You're, messy's not bad. No. Give it's, us some character. There you go. There you go. So you see that? There we go. Taste it. See what you think. Um, okay. You want me to be truthful? Yes, be truthful. <laughs> Please. Yes. <laughs> that's good. I love dill. Ah, and I okay. Love cheese. Okay, so, okay. Two of my and, favorite things. Okay. Yep. And so that is a Havarti. Right. And so that is like a semi soft. Uh, and with that infused with that deal, it's like yum yum, it's very good. isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So Nate, uh, I know that you know there's been a lot of conversation going on about the school closing. Yep. Now, first of all, I'm a product of the Kansas City, Missouri school district. Same. Okay. okay. So Northeast High School, my high school is one that is look is on the. Recommended list. Yes, the, re <laughs> the recommended <laughs> on list. the recommended list, yep. and so I know that it's difficult for the community to wrap their mind around that. You know, these schools, these buildings have been staples in our community, yep. and so it's like, wait a minute, hold on, and, and of course that knee-jerk reaction, you know, to that news. Uh, but can you help the viewers understand, you know? how that decision was, or that recommendation was made. Yeah, sure. I think, I mean, first, I think it's important to recognize the emotion wrapped up in this. Like you said, these schools are a part of the fabric of our communities, particularly neighborhood schools. Absolutely. Um, right, and so I get why people are so emotionally charged about it. They have memories and nostalgia, and you know, my kids went there, my grandkids went there, yes. my, you know, my mom went there, etc. And we continue to have this gutting of our communities, and black and brown communities in particular, right? Yes. So systemic racism is still a very real thing. Absolutely. But we have two things we're trying to accomplish. Okay. One is to really increase academic achievement for our kids okay. and improve their experience when they're in schools. Okay. So if you compare our kids' experience, for example, with Name Your Summer, Blue Springs, Lee Summit, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. the experiences are very different. Okay. And it's because they've got density in the schools that allows them to spread out their teachers more effectively ah. and give them a full complement of experiences. So okay. the example that I like to use that's really relevant here and I think easy for people to wrap their head around is Southeast High School. Yes. Last year, middle of the football season, we had to cut the football program. Oh. Why? Because we didn't have enough kids to field the football team. Well, think okay. about the kids who go to school and their hook is athletics. Yes. Right? That is the reason they're going. Yes. It's not because of the academics and yes. they're interested in history necessarily. It's yes. not all of our kids, but some yes. of our kids. That's the way, that's the thing that keeps them engaged. Absolutely. In the academic side of things. Well, now if you don't have a football program at your school, there's a portion of your kids who are no longer going to show up. Absolutely. So that's just one like easy, I think, tangible thing for people to sort of wrap their head around that's important for us. So that's one of the reasons we're going through this Blueprint 2030 long-term strategic planning. Okay. The second reason is if we're not careful, 30, 40 years from now, this district won't be around. Mm. Right? There's a fiscal cliff coming. Mm. Right? And we don't want to fall off of that cliff. Mm -hmm. And so we're spending so much money to keep these schools that are not fully populated open. Mm -hmm. Central is a good example. It's built for between 12 and 1400 kids. We've got 411 kids in the building. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so I want you to say that again because I really want the viewers to understand what that means. And viewers, I, I want you to think about if this is a business, right? I know it's for the public good. I know it's a public school system, but it has to operate in order for success to be sustainable, it has to operate like a business. So imagine that Central was your business and the capacity from 12 to 1,400, mm -hmm. but you only have 411, 411 seats filled. That's a huge delta. Yeah, it's a huge delta. And if you think about the Kansas City urban education system in its, totali in, in its totality, um, you've got 37 schools in KCPS. You've got another 20 charter schools. So okay. we've got 57 schools serving about 28, 29,000 kids. Wow. Yeah, you have way too much excess capacity uh -huh. for the number of kids we actually have in our schools. And so it's a problem that we have to reckon with. Okay. Um, and as a board, you know, our job is to, as a fiduciary, is to really make sure that this district can thrive.
thrive, not just today or tomorrow, but 20, 30, 40 years out. Absolutely. All right. So this is... Um, it looks like plastic. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's real. It's, it, I mean, we, we'll see. I'm going right. to eat it either way. It's a real cheese. Okay. But it is, and I'm going to show you how we're going to cut this. And so I'm just cutting off this for you, the little uh, outside core. And so we're going to make, we're going to keep the end core on there. Okay. So we're going to cut this, we're going to slice it so you end up with triangles. Okay. okay, and so you can do them about that thick. Okay. Okay. Thank you for having sharp knives. You're welcome. <laughs> and for the record, I actually can't cook. You uh, you can cook. I... <laughs> she, she, she's funny, right? <laughs> yes, I can cook. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what's your specialty? But it's hard. To, it's hard to find time to cook. Um, my specialty is homemade spaghetti sauce. Oh, look it, at it you. It takes all day, and I have some like red wine, I have some oh. jazz playing. Okay. It has to be sunny outside. So I create all these conditions that make it less likely for me to actually cook. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I can't cook for the record. Okay, okay. So you got a bad, okay, look at you. You getting them cut up. Yeah, I'm cut. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what we're going to, I got one more slice to cut, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. Okay? okay, so we're gonna take and we're going to like do opposite. You know, you're try. Uh huh. There you go. You got it. Okay. Um, sure. Let's see. Yeah, you got it. And then we'll find another place on our board that we want that to sit. Okay. So let's say we're just gonna have that sit there. Got it. Yeah. Sort of. You got it. All right. There you go. Look at you. Guaranteed to follow. Yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> so actually what you can do then, I did put us some hummus in these little cups. Okay. And so if you want to grab yours, and if you want to put it to stabilize your cheese, uh, there you go. You. Yeah. And so then we also have over here some red grapes and okay. some green grapes. So you can put those on your board. And you just put them wherever you want them to go. Okay, look at you. Mm, mm. Yes. I don't, even, I don't even need you now. Let me go. See? <laughs> <laughs> and then you have some strawberries. Okay. Now, you can leave your strawberries whole or if you want to cut some of them in half. You know, however you want to do it, okay? okay? Sometimes I do some whole, some half, okay. okay? And so we can put those on the board. So, Nate, how often um, do you, as the board president, um, are you, do you go to the schools and? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, honestly, for me, that is, probably the the most fun okay. in the role mm -hmm. is going into schools and mm -hmm. reading to kids and um man i remember reading to a group of kids a couple of years ago before the pandemic uh-huh and I, I think they're either third or fourth graders and i read a book and at the end you know nobody was really engaged okay you know okay. so i thought man I, I you know i need to get these kids like interested in what we're doing here yes and yes. so i asked the teacher if i could share a little bit about my personal story ah and, and you can just yeah you can just put those wherever okay. you want and she knew a little bit about me and so she said sure and knew that i would keep it age appropriate absolutely and um <laughs> because you know there's some trauma in my background absolutely right that's yes. one of the reasons why i felt like i would be a good advocate for our kids absolutely and so i did i told them a little bit about it man the hands just went up Wow. Right? And we wow. actually had to stop the questions from coming in because the kids were so interested. Wow. Interested, right? And so being able to relate to our kids and yes. understanding like what they're bringing to school with them while we expect them to still be model students. So it was really fun. I love being in the buildings, talking to teachers and the yeah. principals and the Absolutely. kids. Now, we are going to... Uh, this is some smoked Gouda. Okay. Okay? Mm. And so the smoked Gouda is, uh, Gouda is like a kind of like creamy cheese, okay? So again, I'm gonna cut half of it and give it to you. 
And so I'm just gonna let you decide. Oh, how, wow. how do you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how wise that is, but how about I just watch you and then I do it? You know, <laughs> we can do that too. So I'm just gonna make just a just a block out of it, like kind of a triangle. I'm cutting off the little rims. And there we go. Oh, uh, I gotcha. Yeah. yeah I gotcha. And so I'm just gonna put that right in the middle. Right there. Yeah, look at you. Well, this is, I'm trying to get rid of that outer part. Yes. Then... Yes. There you go. All right. Where'd you put yours? Oh, put... oh, you did something totally different. No, I but clearly you're was not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different. But that's okay. It's your board, and you make it how you want to make it. All right. Okay? So during the holidays when you and Felicia and uh, your family are, you know, getting ready for dinner or whatever, right? you can tell Felicia, hey baby, I got it. I can make the charcuterie. Yeah. Yes. I can do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, there we go. So now we have, so we have some meat. We also have some uh, asparagus. Always try to put some vegetables on there, just you know, because that's just me. Okay. So one of the things, I'm gonna move these off to the side. So you can take a piece of your turkey, and this is a creamy cheese that has uh, chives in it. Okay. okay. And so I'm just taking a little bit, and I'll get, let you get some, and I'm gonna put it on my piece of salami here. Okay. Okay. And then, All the way across or just half? Uh, you can do just half since okay. you have yeah, a, a bigger piece of meat. And so then we're going to take the asparagus, which is raw, okay? okay? And then we're just going to roll it, like halfway up the asparagus. Okay. Yep. And okay. then just roll it. Mm -hmm. This is where fingernails would be handy. <laughs> and so then you have something that looks like that. And then you could just or lay that. it. Yes, and then you can just sort of. lay it on your board. Okay. Okay. And then you can do another one. And this just kind of gives, you know, again, a little okay. bit of, oh, I'm sorry. Look, there we go. things I've heard you know people talk about uh, with the recommendations that have been that are being made is that it's some it has something to do with gentrification hmm. yeah <clears throat> rumors are a funny thing okay um, they take on a life of their own if you're not careful um, so I would challenge anybody to find a more diverse elected board or council mm -hmm. in this entire region than ours mm -hmm. Right, where there's only two men on the on the board. Um, there's four black people, two uh, or one Hispanic person, one white lady, and one lady who's um, biracial, which I am as well, who's uh, white and and Hispanic as well. So it's an interesting thing. A board like ours, yes. I mean, we'd have to be kind of diabolical to go try to gentrify our own community. Yes. Right. Yes. We are yes. we are not that group. But again, I understand why people have this distrust. Yes. And we know that parts of the city, particularly you know, troops mm -hmm. right now are yes. being gentrified. Yes. Um, so the dividing line keeps getting moved east. East. Yes. And we keep pushing our communities out. Yes. Um, I would encourage people to, to really contact their city council person around how can we go build out affordable housing for our communities. Absolutely. That's part of the challenge. Right? Absolutely. Yes. Um, so, but again, in, in this disinvestment in our communities is an issue as well. Mm -hmm. Grocery stores or lack thereof. Yes. Right? Banks or lack thereof. Yes. All really important problems that we need to address as a community, but it's not the role of the school board. True that. So, so why then do you think people have that unrealistic expectation of you, of the school board? 
Um, I don't know. I, honestly, I don't think people really understand what school boards do. Ah, so it's an education thing. It, it, I mean, that's part of it for mm -hmm. sure. And if you're an elected person, then you automatically get tagged as someone who's dishonest. Um, yes. Doing things in your own best interest and those sort of things. Again, I understand the distrust, but right. what I would tell people is go have a conversation with your school board member, right? Get to yes. know them. Um, and then you can base your judgment on those conversations, right. that person's character. Watch the decisions that we make. Absolutely. Right? Come to school board meetings and watch how we operate while we're in those meetings, etc. Absolutely, um, yes. So don't base it on what you've heard um, or even speculation, but get to know us. Absolutely, yes. Okay, y'all. Y'all saw that quick break, right? So, it's all about charcuterie by Sheila. The holidays are coming up. Hit us up, y'all, so that we can create lovely charcuterie boards for you and your family. And so, we are here in the Gangster Goodies Kitchen with Nate Hogan, who is the board president for the Kansas City, Missouri School District. Uh, and we've been having a conversation about all of the changes that are taking place and making charcuterie, yeah. okay? It's the holiday, so yay. Okay, so we have just two more things we're going to do. Okay. Okay, and so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to, and this could be done with an orange, you can do it with kiwi, okay. and it just kinda, you know, makes it look pretty. So we're gonna do, um, like triangles. We're gonna, you know how when you when your kids were little and you would cut out the pumpkins and, okay, so that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, okay. See that? in front of you okay. and so what you're going to do is you're going to take some of your turkey and you're going to put it in your cup kind of like that no. yes yes uh-huh okay. and so it actually let's see. Cut them? yeah cut it in half okay. and see if that yeah but still the rounded portion on top, top. Mm -hmm. okay yeah. okay there you go yes and so put another one in, kind of like that. Gotcha. Okay. This is eventually going to be a rose. Gotcha. Okay. So, Nate, if there was one more thing you'd like to share with the viewers as it relates yeah. to the work that you do in the community with the school board, uh, what, would you, what would you say to them? Yeah, you know, I think staying engaged is the most important feedback I can give people. And I know it's hard, uh, but even if it's once a week, Yes. finding a way to get engaged, whether it's, you know, sending a note to your teacher and saying thank you, you know, yes. for the work that you're doing with my, my son or my daughter, or um, showing up to a school board once every couple of months and, and just yes. hearing what's going on. Absolutely. Um, those are always, they're little steps that you can do that keep you engaged so that when something like this comes around, it doesn't feel like it's a surprise. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's the main thing, is how you, you know, find a way to get engaged, even if it's just a little bit, it's helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, if they wanted to contact you, yep. how could they contact you? Yep, uh, my email address is nhogan at kcpublicschools.org. Got it. We'll make sure we put that across the screen. Very you good. all, if you have any questions, our babies are our future, you know, and their education is extremely important. And so, you know, we have to do this together, yep. you know, together. and so get engaged. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, uh, give Nate Hogan and drop him an email, and I'm sure he's going to respond back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. You all enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you so much for watching. And stay engaged, Kansas City. These are our babies. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Absolutely. You. Yes.